You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Dixon City Hyundai and Performance Kia. Welcome to Coach's Field at Tiger Stadium, otherwise known as Jim Roth Field. We're in Catawissa, Columbia County. Tonight, it's the long-anticipated matchup between Berwick and Southern Columbia. Good evening, everyone. I'm Bob Ide. Hannah O'Reilly will join us on the sidelines shortly. And Jan Cichak, a lot going on here tonight. Wow. Not only between these two teams, they won 17 state titles. The Tigers are going for their 61st consecutive win. Amazing. We're going to have a full-capacity crowd, which we haven't seen in probably two years. Perfect. And, oh, yeah, Jan, it's the opening night of high school football <laughs> 2021. What a way to kick off Friday Night Rivals tonight. Two-story teams. We've got these coaches have g gathered so much in terms of wins and losses, state titles. I, I'm, I'm so nervous. <laughs> I'm just excited to get this game going. Okay, let's talk about Berwick first. A one-win season a year ago. They got some bad news this week. They lost four starters to COVID protocol. They all tested negative, but they have to sit out for 10 days. That includes their starting running backs, Aiden Mason and Ben Knorr. So our Toyota Spotlight player is a backup running back who's going to get the start today, Ryan Banks. Ryan Banks last year only had the ball 10 times for 27 yards. He's relatively new to the offense, being the junior that was behind these guys. And he's got a lot on his shoulders, and the Bulldogs are going to be leaning very hard on him. Southern Columbia, meanwhile, they return just about everyone on the offense, and that means our other Toyota Spotlight player, one of the best in the state, Gavin Garcia. Gavin Garcia, 5'9", 190 pounds, senior. He rushed for almost 2,000 yards last year, 30 touchdowns. He's got 4,800 yards in his career, 81 touchdowns. He's torn between Kent State and Harvard right now. Not too bad. Beautiful night, a little muggy, some storms in the area. So let's check in now with the weather with Allie DeBicke from the Fox 56 News, first at 10. Hey there, everybody. Here's your Friday night rivals forecast. We're tracking that heat and humidity. It's been a hot couple of days and it's staying with us through our Berwick versus Southern Columbia game tonight. Check out kickoff temperatures near 81 degrees by halftime, still holding to the mid 70s with humidity outside. We will also have that chance for a few isolated scattered thunderstorms. So stay weather aware as we head through this evening. That chance is going to linger as we head towards midnight tonight. So something to be watchful of as we head into your week and forecast things should become a little bit cooler not by much by summer standards we'll talk a little bit more about that at fox 56 but for now we'll send it back over to the field these two teams haven't met since 1975 can the bulldogs take a bite out of the tigers winning streak we'll find out it's berwick and southern columbia next You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Dixon City Hyundai and Performance Kia. The Bulldogs have made their way to Catawissa to take out the Tigers of Southern Columbia. They are set for opening night here in Columbia County. And here come the Tigers, the defending AA state champions, four in a row, looking for five after this year. We are back at Tiger Stadium. The third member of our crew is Hannah O'Reilly. And Hannah, beautiful night for high school football. Big crowd on hand, and everyone's excited. 
Yeah, that's right. Bob and Jan, besides the wacky weather we've been having, we are so excited to be back for the 2021 football season. It feels so good to say that. Now, tonight we have Berwick against Southern Columbia. And the last time these teams played each other was 1975. So it's going to be a great game. And you know who's more excited than I am? The hundreds of fans that have been shuffling into these stands since around 4 o'clock. They are dedicated, they're excited, and we are hoping for a great game that stays dry. Now, Bob and Jan, I have one question for you guys up in the booth. Are you ready for a great night of football? We oh, are ready, yeah. yeah. We are ready for a great season of football. <laughs> we are happy. We have a regular season on tap, maybe a couple playoffs, and please, COVID, stay away. Oh, stay away, just, yeah, we, please, please. There you see the referees for tonight's game. Kerry Latza leading the District 4 crew. And there you see his crew for this big game. And we are all set. The toss went to Berwick, Jan, and they deferred. Well, now, so you okay. look at it in two ways, right? You were, we were talking pregame. Mm -hmm. Either they're going to give the ball to Southern Columbia, or maybe they got a trick up their sleeve. I, I, You know what? They have nothing to lose in this game because they lost their starters due to the COVID protocol at their school and now why not go for an onside kick is is southern columbia going to be ready for it you know it because they're they're coached up that way um and one thing that could be a positive for berwick if they do do that southern gets the ball now their stats won't be as good this week <laughs> okay so they're gonna have 50 yards or, or 60 yards ago one of the guys they lost was the kicker so bruce hartman does the honors and we are underway for the 2021 season and that is taken by garrett garcia so a kickoff goes down, and here come the Tigers and this offense at the 33-yard line, and we welcome back Liam Claybaugh. He started last year, had a very, very great, good year. They went to a state title. This is brought to you by Allied Services, mind you. Nine TDs, just three interceptions. And again, with a wing T offense, it's predicated on the run game with uh, mismatches and trying to catch the angles. So when you put a young man in there like Claybaugh here, he doesn't throw the ball a lot. He, uh, we were talking to him last Saturday. Again, Trevor Lawrence, he's got that long hair, and he kind of has the same motions as Trevor does. And we saw last week that they threw the ball more than they have. It's been 3,592 3, days since the Tigers have lost a regular season game. You heard me right. Since 2011, Garcia up for a nice game to the 37-yard line. I'll tell you what, Gavin Garcia, I mean, what hasn't been said about this young man? Watch the way he stops on a dime. He hops back into the lane, and again, he is so strong. He's got a low center of gravity. It took four Bulldogs to bring him down. Jan, last year, Berwick's defense gave up 24 points. They're facing an offense that gave, last year averaged 45. How do they stop this wing tee? Well, again, it's going to be a tall order for them. And there was a fumble. That's that one way you well, do it. That's, it is one way. And that is fumble by Braden Wislowski. We'll get back to Jan's thoughts on that. And a big take turnover for the dogs early on. Taji Taylor with that. Again, they go with the wing sweep, the buck sweep. And again, he puts the ball out there. And again, it just comes right out. He punched it. Number seven punched it out for him. That was Dre Wilk. And we know him from his brothers uh, pre previously uh, doing great things, leading interceptions at Berwick. Uh, again, this is a break that Berwick needed. This is a huge break against the high-powered offense. So the Tigers come on the field. They replace eight starters, does Southern Columbia, but they look pretty good in the scrimmage against Valley View. Well, one thing that defense does is fly to the ball. They are so fast. So Backus comes up off the left-hand side and makes a positive game. So the quarterback this year made two starts last year at the end of the season. It's Matt Lachinsky. There you see his numbers. An interception, a lot of pressure on him tonight. Well, there is, but again, Coach Carm DeFrancesco told him, and I heard him say, the game is not yours to win. Just play your game, play one play at a time, and if anything bad happens, let it go. Berwick last year averaged 16 points per game, 170 yards on the ground. They're going to need to control the clock tonight. Nice little hole for Backus, and he comes up through, and he is stopped by number 32 for the dogs. That is Dominic Federoff, the six foot, 190 pound freshman. Here is, here are, excuse me, the starters, brought to you by Dixon City Hyundai. There you 
see the quarterback Lachinsky and Backus in the backfield. They're going to start three wideouts tonight. Slabinski, Wilk Boone, and the tight end, tight end will be Spencer Kishball. And the guys up front, Chase Shuckers, is a freshman. There's two seniors on that offensive line. So Lachinsky's back for his first pass. He connects to the corner. To number three. That was Ethan Lear with the reception there, the sophomore. Again, nice projection. They were bringing some heat, the Tigers were. And again, a nice, easy five-yard out that gives the confidence to the quarterback. Nice, easy pitch and catch. And again, now the Bulldogs, it's fourth and four at inside Southern Columbia's territory at the 30-yard line. So they will go for it on fourth down after the uncharacteristic turnover for Southern Columbia on their opening drive. What do they have in store as they come out underneath center? Chinsky will be in the shotgun. Sidecar is Bankus. We have some movement, and I think the tailback may have flinched a little bit. We'll see what the referee says. So it's still fourth down, and it looks like well, Coach a, Carr might punt this ball and try to pin Southern Columbia deep. Now, Brendan Hinkle was the punter as well. And so now it's it looked, uh, Bruce Hartman, number it looked, 65. It, I was told it's Hartman, but I, I think it's Trey Wilk out there, Coach. Number seven. Okay. Trey Wilk is the punter. Oh, real low snap, but he's going to get a positive bounce. And it will go out of bounds inside the 15 at the 13. That was a great job, believe it or not. I mean, most coaches might be upset that he shanked the ball, but that went perfect for the Bulldogs on that series. Pins them back there at the 13-yard line. Snap was a little high, and again, with uh, Coach DeFrancesco and their staff scrambling literally hours before the game to make these adjustments, uh, you know, hats off to the staff and, more importantly, to those players on the sideline for Berwick. So the Tigers come out after the fumble. They stop Berwick, and they get the ball back. Garcia up left side. That is actually West Barnes for about eight yards. Here is the offense for Southern Columbia. Brought to you by Dixon City Hyundai. Claiborne and Barnes are in the backfield to start. And remember, they want to run a wing key. So Wislowski and Garcia, they're actually the halfbacks. Jake Rose will get to start this year as a split end. And the tight end will be Ryan Kerstetter. Up front, a lot of experience up there. Leffler is a senior. And in fact, they have three seniors and two juniors on that right side. So Garcia, real hard running. Berwick does a nice job up front. The ball comes out, but he was down. And he'll be up and through for a figure law first down. Well, I'll tell you what, that wing tee, again, you asked earlier, Bob, what do they have to do? They just have to play their assignment. They can't get driven off the line of scrimmage. You see them collapsing right there. They're all pursuing to the ball. But these running backs from Southern Columbia are shorter guys, but they are strong, and you can see that they have that strength and that burst to get through the hole quick. There is the state's all-time leader in wins, Jim Roth. He got that in the state championship game last year. Passing George Curry. First pass, Clee. Lebon to Rhodes for a big game inside dog territory down to the 32 yard line. We saw that last week in the Valley View scrimmage that they really worked their passing game. And talk about timing. This is perfect. Look, he's got plenty of time. Gets great air under that ball. Great placement. Rose, who won two gold medals at the state championship for the 110 and the 300 hurdles had a nice he beat him by one step and for a huge gain 40 yard gain on the first pass for Leon Claiborne on the season Tigers back out up for a couple is Garcia near the 25 yard line gain of six Gavin Garcia Yards last year, a whole bunch of touchdowns, and he did a good job receiving just three catches, 158 yards, and two touchdowns. And again, the wing tee is not predicated on passing the ball, but they have that threat. And we just saw with Cleavon back there, he's not afraid to go downtown with it. Yeah, 
Wislowski tries to get through, but Taylor shoots in from the defensive end. A loss on the play, and Wislowski is slow to get up. But a great play by number eight, the senior. The Bulldogs, they had gang tackling on that one. Again, led by Najee Taylor on this. They go with that outside the buck sweep. And again, he did a great job coming in. There was a missed assignment. And you know Coach Rothstaff is going to take care of that to make sure that doesn't happen again. And I hope that he's okay down there. So one of those speedsters, those track stars that Southern Columbia seems to have after last year's state championship, tr state track and field meet, was Lasky at 13 touchdowns last year. Here are your performance Kia, keys to the game. Well, for Southern Columbia, they're worried about the defending the run, their pass rush. They want to make sure that they can get take care of the Bulldogs with that and their pass execution, as we saw, if we had to send in one film, that would be it. Their pass execution was 100%. But Coach Roth really wants to work that to make them more multi-dimensional on their offense. And for Berwick, what are their keys to the game? Well, no turnovers and no injuries because, again, now they're down four, four players and they didn't have a huge roster to start. They were, I believe, at 34 or 35 mm -hmm. kids on the roster. And every coach is going through that right now. Even uh, Southern Columbia has 42 kids. You would think after... All the state titles they yeah. won. There would be tons of kids, but there just isn't that pool of kids anymore. Yeah, Jake Rose talking to him last week. So they usually have about 50 kids, but they, their first teamers are really, oh. really good. <laughs> they are great. I mean, Coach Roth was worried about his defense having eight kids yeah. to replace, but uh, these kids just, they know that it's their time. So a third and long, Claiborne back. Here comes the rush from the dogs. They get it out, and Barnes ran before he caught the ball. He had some running room. So that goes incomplete, and it's fourth down. A great job by the Bulldogs' defense. Again, Barnes, they tried to set up the screenplay to the right-hand side, and again, it's really it's it's so hard for a defensive lineman to stop and retrace their tracks when the offensive lineman just lets them go. But a miscue by the Tigers helps the Burwork Bulldogs out now, and we got fourth, and they're going for it. Isaac Carter is the kicker. It's a little bit too far for him for a field goal. So on fourth down, Tigers go for it, as Coach said. Pocket comes and collapses. But Claibon has running room. Has a first down. Is it more? It is a touchdown, Southern Columbia, 31 yards for Liam Claibon. Well... They are not afraid to throw the ball. And, again, the coverage wasn't there. There was a little miscue on uh, the pass protection. And Cleavon does a nice job. And I saw the Berwick defender that was playing on their sideline look at the official because he got hit. But it turns into a run. And, again, they're allowed to block downfield. You might see it on the, our great replay right there. And, again, he's turning right to the official. He say, but it wasn't a pass route. They'll go for two. Carter is probably out. Didn't see him warming up. They give it. They get a two-point conversion from Garcia. And with 624 in the first quarter, the Tigers take the early lead. Eight to nothing.
Allied Services Friday Night Rivals presented by Dixon City Hyundai and Performance Kia back with you at Jim Roth Field, Tiger Stadium in Catawissa. A lot of storms around us, but we got this game underway. And Claybon, who's going to actually kick it off, the quarterback ran it in from 31 yards. It's 8 to nothing. So Ice Carter out tonight. He's their normal kicker. And he does a pretty good job. <laughs> and a great he job. gets back to Bacchus, and Bacchus with some running up past the 25 yard line. Harry's Sporting Goods since 1891. Visit Harry's on West Front Street in Berwick for all of your back to school top brands, top service. Good luck, Burwick Bulldogs. Remember to shop local and, as always, hashtag you need new sneaks. I like my sneaks, but I will go there to get new sneakers tomorrow if you want. What's a hashtag? <sighs> You're old. <laughs> yes, I am. That's my daughter. <laughs> Here come that, the dogs. So the Bill Dogs have it at the 25 yard line. That was a, a real nice, nice return. Yeah, it will, a long drive here would be what Berwick needs. Let's see if they can put something together and get some offense going. So Luchinski hands it off to Bacchus, and he's got room, and he is down the sidelines. Can they catch him? They do from behind. Connor Gallagher tracked down Bacchus, but he's inside Tiger territory at the 43-yard line. They just go with the speed sweep here, and again, he just kept creases that outside they pinched it in they had the defensive end southern columbia tigers defensive end inside open up the outside and he was run, running really well again jim or bob you were just saying how they should just take their time grind it out keep the ball away from southern columbia but when you get opportunities like that you don't want to wait yep 32 yards for the junior who only had 10 rushes last year for 27 well, the, yards. for 27 yards so they give it inside to him there's some good running room, and the offensive line doing a nice job for Berwick so far. So here is this Southern Columbia defense. Gave up just nine points last year, but we have eight new starters. So it's Berlich, Treshock, Yorks, and Sharo in the 4-4 defense. Zito, Fedorov, Garrett Garcia, and Jake Rose. And then the secondary, three brand-new starters back there, Gallagher, Kozlowski, and Helwick. You would think teams would try to exploit that secondary, but they got to contend with those eight inside guys that are very fast. Got to control the clock if you're Carm Francesco's team. Lachinski back, a little bit of pressure, throws a dart to Wilk, but it goes way behind him, and it goes incomplete. And number 87, Derek Berlitz, came flying off the edge really strong, putting pressure on him. And again, Lachinski steps up, a quick release, and again, the ball was there, but there were three Tigers. That would have been really a tough one to re, uh, catch in that situation. Like what Berwick's doing right now, Jan. Absolutely. Just, you know, take the time off the clock. You want to keep the Southern Columbia offense off the field. You know, a first down here would go a long way towards that, right? And that's all the dogs have to do right now is they just have to worry about let's get the next first down. They're not worried about getting into the end zone at this point. They just want to grind it out, Bob, as you said, and just get those first downs. Quick release from Lachinsky again. He was under pressure. It was only like a one-step drop and throw, and fourth down now on the way. Boy, that front four is really putting a lot of pressure on. They did bring the outside backer, Zito, to make it a five-man pressure. And again, he just overthrew that. Again, he's going to have to just settle down. Again, these kids from Berwick came down here knowing it's a monumental task just to play Southern and then just to even try to sniff beating them. It, it would just be outrageous. So they get a couple of positive plays, then they take a step backwards. It's fourth down now. Wilk on to punt again. Garcia near his goal line. It's a better kick. Should be able to get it is Garcia at the 10, but the white shirts are there. Taken down immediately is Garcia. Evan Megan makes the tackle, and the Tigers are backed up. Look at their own end zone. Yep. Again, Gavin Garcia has that confidence for the punt return, but there were three white shirts around him. Great job on special teams. That other third of the game that coaches always talk about that are critical. Now, right now, Berwick's defense has to try to contain Gavin Garcia, Rose, 
and, and all the other running backs that they have in here that are so good and strong. This is a team in the state championship game that rushed for 228 yards, but it's what they did in that championship game, Jan, through the air that is amazing. 177 yards uh, who, through the know, air, and they, they won the state title again. Another great job by the Dogs. That's Wilk shooting in on Garcia. Great what, Wilk. Tremendous yeah, job, Bob. It's what they did through the air that was amazing, and, and they beat Wilmington pretty good, 42-14. to 14. Let's see this play again. They're going with this speed sweep coming around, and again, he just held his ground. He did his responsibility. Then he had outside help from Spencer Kishball to drop him for a loss. But, Bob, getting back to what we, you were saying, a wing T team does not throw the ball. And, again, Coach Roth now is expanding that, and that's becoming more and more intricate into their playbook. Safeties are only 10 yards deep. Looks like nine men on the line of scrimmage, maybe ten. Wozlowski, who has track speed, and he's off. You might not catch him. Wozlowski, he's a gold medalist at Shippensburg, and he's got a touchdown for the Tigers. That was 92 nice. yards. Bob, you had just mentioned that they had nine to ten guys in the box. That's the problem is when you compress that box, you keep them inside, and you got these type of players, especially with Slosky, gold medal winner in the 100. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, he, once he bounced to the outside, he's gone. And again, there was some whites there. The j defensive uh, Bulldogs were out there, but he just creased it to the outside in 92 yards for payday. The one thing the Ann and I noticed in their scrimmage against Valley View is the team speed. Oh. And, and we, you know, Jake Rose, Garcia, there he was, Lasky, winning the 100, the 200 at the in the at, at Shippensburg. Mm -hmm. But the team speed, getting to the ball, and the threat they have every time they run it, it's just amazing. Jim Ross said this may be the fastest team he's ever had, and he did, and and he was really proud of the accomplishments that they had at uh, Shippensburg, with the individual medals and winning the state team title. So they'll go for two. Claybon back. Caught by Garcia. 16 nothing Southern Columbia. 3.53 left in the first quarter. Here's the touchdown again. Now watch as he comes across the speed sweep. And again, they just sealed. They push down. The left side of that offensive line just pushes everything down. The offensive tackle will hit, and it'll chip to the second level, and that sealed it for the 92-yard touchdown. So officially three plays, 89 yards, because they lost five yards on the first one, but a 92-yard touchdown run for Braden Wozlowski, his first of what might be many <laughs> on the season. So Berwick in a hole now. 16 to nothing had a couple positive plays on offense, but really they're gonna have to convert on second and third down Again, they're going to have to those are key and we always talk about that and You'll hear the guys in the college and the pro level announcers talk about that third down conversion uh, Again, that is key especially tonight for Berwick to maintain the ball Well, Claybon does the kicking and Taylor takes it away from Bankus at the 10 and a Tiger is down on the field making the stop. Ryan Kersetter. Thank you. Kersetter was Johnny on the spot. And Berwick backed up. They'll start. Looks like near, let's see where they mark at the 16-yard line. They're going to have to do a better job communicating. Again, when you tell your returners, make sure you guys communicate me, 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 you, you, you. There was a little bit of miscommunication because the off-back is supposed to lead block for you into that. So we'll get the play on the sidelines. Make sure you get a lot of water tonight. It's very <laughs> humid out. Maybe more humid in this booth, oh, but big time. But that's beside the point. We're hydrating. <laughs> don't worry. I know everyone's worried. We don't want to cramp up. No. So Lachinsky is a big, big back. 6'1", 205, a junior. Quarterback comes out, throws a quick out to Bankus or, or Wilk, I should say. And Wilk comes up a little bit lame, but a nice gain of about seven. I like this. I like what uh, Coach DeFrancesco is coming out doing. The quick hitters, a lot of confidence throws, easy throws, pitch and catch. And more importantly on that, you saw Taylor, Taji Taylor, does a nice job blocking that corner, kicking him out, and that allowed Wilk to slip back inside for seven yards. 
with not a lot of players on the Berwick roster. A lot of these guys are going both ways. They're getting tired already, first quarter, first game. Mm -hmm. uh, Southern Columbia, uh, uh, not a norm for them. They have a couple of guys going, going two both ways, ways yes. They, and Coach Roth mentioned that last week when we spoke to him at the scrimmage. Look out. Carson Savinsky. Because Savinsky's coming in, the 250-pound senior for a loss of three, third down on the way. Well, the pulling guard missed his assignment on that one. Again, as you're pulling, you're taught, you teach these kids, all right, you're supposed to pull, you're supposed to actually get the first man beyond the line of scrimmage, but if there's something in an opposite color jersey in your way, knock it down. So here's one of those third downs that Berwick really needs to convert to 25 in the first quarter, trailing already 16 to nothing. Chinsky, pocket closes and he goes down. First sack of the season for the Bulldogs. A host of players in there, Garrett Garcia, along with Trevor Yorks. You'll see one, two, three, four, five, six. They put a six man pressure on and then you have a running back looking and you have your offensive line turning around watching your quarterback. That's really frustrating as a quarterback, but the offensive line, they know they can match up man to man and they, they're gonna have to work on their assignments. Garcia, Wozlowski, the two track stars at their 50. Trey Wilk, not the normal punter. He needs a good kick here. It's better, his best kick of the night, but it is returnable. Wozlowski, oh, he decided not to take it, and it will be down inside Bulldog territory at the 48-yard line. So the last time Berwick won a state championship beyond 1997. That was a string of four in a row, four of the dogs under coach, the late George Curry, the dynasty set, but it hasn't been that way since coach passed. Uh, they've had some up and down seasons, including last year. Mm -hmm. uh, so this isn't your typical, what we'd like to say, Berwick team. Uh, if, you, if you said to anybody that knows Berwick football that they went one in five last year due to COVID, the shortened season, they would think that you're off your rocker. But, uh, again, it, it has affected even Berwick uh, in terms of getting players to come out. Uh, that way that Coach Curry had that entire community feeding into what he was doing, um, it, it's, times have changed, and it has changed in Berwick. And now, even here, like I said, Southern talking to Coach Roth last week, and he said, yeah, it's, it's getting tougher to get kids to commit to what they need to do to be successful. And you want to talk about a high success rate here in Southern Columbia? Uh, their expectations are super high. 19 appearances in the state finals for Southern Columbia, and that's an A and double A. 527 wins as a team. That's since 1963. Maybe a little bit more than that, too, after last year. So after the water break, Southern has the ball. Back to the wing tee, and Claiborne's going to come out throwing. And the pocket collapses, and he's taken down and still on his feet, and finally goes down. Berwick with a big play and a big sack. Spencer Kishball, Taji Taylor back there to make sure that Claiborne cannot get out. They do a nice job. And, again, they bring some pressure in. And, again, number 72 for the uh, Southern Columbia, Brett Horton's got to stay with his block. And you know that's, again, first game, first real game. And, again, the way they have this uh, preseason set up, you have one scrimmage. Uh, but these kids are going to passing scrimmages, going to offensive line camps. They've just got to get those jitters out. And, and it's, I don't think this is anything for them to worry about. Loss of eight on the play. A little inside reverse. Garcia with running room. Makes a great move. Still on his feet. Garcia take it down from behind in Berwick territory up to the 34-yard line. And there's a flag down back near the line of scrimmage. This one may be coming back. And that's why you can say, see and, and say why Gavin Garcia is such a special athlete. He's a great student, and he's a great athlete. You saw the way that he can stop, hop, jump, and, he, and he's just 
shaking and baking out there, making the Bulldogs miss. To Kerry Latza. See the holding call, so after the sack, they'll back up Southern as well. Let's see if we can see the holding penalty. Maybe on the inside, Jan? Yeah, that was on the inside, and again, the uh, Berwick player turned, so he was to his back, and they, that's probably why they did that. So 18 seconds left in this first quarter. This should be, might be the last play of the quarter. Southern with a second down and 31. Clock is rolling. They didn't need to snap it, but they did. Was Lasky? Makes a move. Clock ends, and that will end the first quarter. So the long-awaited matchup between two storied programs is underway, and we have one quarter in the books here in Catawissa, and it's the Tigers over the Dogs, 16 to nothing. You're watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Dixon City Hyundai and Performance Kia. Now, welcome back to tonight's game. It's Southern Columbia against Berwick. But right now, I'm going to talk to you about Car Vision Nissan Scholar Athletes. So each week, the schools get to pick one student who not only is amazing in the sport that they play, but performs well in the classroom as well. Now, each of these applicants will have the chance to win $5,000 at the end of the season. Tonight, we have Joseph Quinton from Southern Columbia and Braden Boone from Berwick. Joseph plays track football and wrestles. Braden plays basketball, baseball, and football. Now, both of tonight's scholar athletes do play football, but that does not always happen. Scholar athlete applicants can be male or female and can play any sport. Now, once again, we want to say congratulations to Joseph Quinton and Braden Boone on their success. Bob, back to you in the booth. Always great when we can have a scholar athlete back, and that's what, really what it's all about in high school. You want to get that education, and all the athletes that we see all season long, congrats to them, and they're doing it in the classroom. Jan Cichak, Bob I, back in Catawissa, Southern Columbia on a third and 22. is going to air it out to Jake Rose, and Rose can't pull it in. It goes incomplete. So I would think Southern Columbia will punt. And a great job by Berwick. They get a sack. A holding call on the Tigers, and they hold and force the, the Tigers into giving the ball back to them. Now this is exactly what Berwick wanted to do. They wanted to try to keep the Bur or Southern Columbia offense in check and off the field, and they did that with that nice three and out there. They ended up getting that holding call, which really backed them up. Play ball with a nice kick. Wilk has some running room. He catches it on the fly. What a good job by Berwick, or by the Tigers, I should say, coming down was 16 Michael Zito to make the stop. And Ryan Kirsten, number 30, again being in there as a special teams player for the Tigers. Okay, so the dogs offense. Open it up a little bit, maybe a trick play. I mean, you got some mark your offense, no, <laughs> by going too far? I, no, I, I think... You know, I mean, 16 nothing. You don't have to really send, sound the alarm at this point, but I'd like to see them get back to try to get maybe to some of the outside runs that they had success with earlier. The quick games, the five yards outs, those were doing well. 
So we'll see. But again, Bob, that's why I'm up here now. <laughs> that's true. That, that's true, yeah. That, that is true. No one's calling you? Uh, I, I, you know. You get you, offers you keep, every year? Hey, Bob, you keep uh, being that uh, headhunter for me and asking. So. Yeah, right, I know. <laughs> Bang us to the outside, and Garrett Garcia shoots in. What a pleasant surprise he was last year as a freshman. 106 total tackles last year, one and a half sacks for a freshman. Talk about uh, a legacy when you had two. You had Gage Garcia, who went to Michigan State. You have your brother Gavin in front of you, being able to play with your brother. Uh, the expectations in that household, I'm sure, are probably through the roof. And he did. He stepped up. And, again, Coach Roth and the staff, they do plug freshmen in. Uh, they don't put them over their head. They just put them in the right position to be successful. I'll correct you. Gage was at Michigan. Oh, He's I'm transferred sorry. to Lehigh, just so you know. So Bankus again, nowhere to go. Third and long now facing the Bulldogs. They ran that play a couple times, and he had, he did get some positive yardage. But the Tiger defense has made the adjustments, and, and now Carb Francesco, his third season with the Bulldogs. Might, might see a little bootleg action in here right now because, again, if they can get that fast-flowing defense to go with the play action, have your bootleg, quarterback bootleg away from it, uh, it might open it up for them. Carm's coached everywhere, Shaboka, Carmel, <laughs> uh, Line Mountain. I mean, and, you name and, it. And, and, and great Carm success everywhere oh, he's gone. Absolutely, absolutely. I know he's frustrated. He wanted. He wants to carry this bulldog legacy on. Lachinsky backing up off his back foot. Can't hit Wilk over the middle, and that will give the ball back to Southern Columbia. Again, Trey, Dre Wilk coming across the middle on that drag pattern. Again, the ball was just a little bit behind him. And, again, as I alluded to earlier, it's a matter of timing. And, again, these guys, this is their first real game. So they're all going to be a little bit rusty with their timing, and that's all going to get better. So Wilk back to kick. Again, he's getting better at it. This is a much better high-hanging kick. Garcia, spin move. Come up to the other side. Can he pick up some blocks? He does. Garcia, sheds a tackle. To the other side. It's hard to take down Gavin Garcia. He wills it in for a Tiger touchdown. That's why you want Gavin Garcia. One word, adjective. Wow. <laughs> Talk about effort after effort. Great balance, great spin. Wow. That's why he is a top prospect and was the player of the year in double A in Pennsylvania. He took it from his 32, and Berwick just couldn't get him. They couldn't. And again, you see that he has lead blockers in front of him. He's cutting, he's juck, shucking and jiving, and, and, and he's just, again, right there. He had it, and they just the strength of that young man, he just pulled out of that tackle for the touchdown. 62-yard punt return for Gavin Garcia, and after you took it to one side of the field to the other, he ran a lot more than 62 <laughs> yards. Yeah, he did, but he's in great shape, and I, you know what? He's not going to be tired after that 62-yard touchdown. Well, they'll go for two to Barnes. Barnes walks in. We'll stay right here. There's a flag down. Let's see what this flag is on the two-point conversion. See, if it goes against Berwick, it will hand notes an illegal motion. They'll have to convert the two-pointer from the eight-yard line now. Get their kicker out tonight, Isaac Carter. So they've been going for two, which is not a bad thing if you're Southern Columbia. Nine forty-six left in this half. I think we have a timeout call by the Bulldogs. So we'll stay right here as the coaches go on the field. The water boys are out there. Get, make sure you get the fluids in tonight on a hot human evening. Jim Roth talking to the referees. 456 wins. That's amazing. <laughs> And, and still going strong. He'll shatter the record. He Incredible. And, and he's been on this sideline for 38 years. 
that's unheard of. And again, the success that he's had here, you said 456 wins? I don't want to... Yes. That, I mean, you everybody do the math. Just if you do that, I mean, he's got more than 10 wins a year Yeah, and that he's been here. Yeah. I mean, he's a young 65, 66, 67, something there. He looks like he's in the 50s. He's always looked great, very fit. So after the timeout by the dogs, two-point conversion still in question after the Garcia touchdowns, 22 nothing. Clayvon back. Steps up, skies one to the sideline. It is caught for the two-point conversion by Jake Rose. 24 nothing to score. We'll be right back here on my TV WQMY. Back in Catawissa, 24 nothing the Tigers over the dogs. The kickoff was taken by Bankus. He returns it up to the 22-yard line. That's where the Bulldogs will start their possession here in the second quarter. So we've seen some exciting plays already from Southern Columbia. The Gavin Garcia, that could be a play of the year, and it's already the first game. A 62-yard punt return. That was vintage Garcia. We're going to miss him. We've been watching him since, what, freshman Fresh, season? Freshman where he played years, with his four brother. years, yes. And again, Kent State and Harvard are his final two college decisions. Very different aspects there. Absolutely. We can talk about that. But obviously a very intelligent young man. So the Bulldogs out the bank. Is, he's had some running room tonight. He picked Sheds up for about three yards. And again, uh, Bankus is... You know, an unknown. He's that question mark out there. They do a nice job with the RPO in here. And, again, the offensive line did a nice job. And number four for the uh, Bulldogs does a nice job slamming down. That's Spencer Kishball, the junior, 6'3", 195 pounds, does a nice job stepping inside to seal that linebacker, inside linebacker, to allow him to squeeze out for the four yards. Berwick last year, the one win was against Pittston area, excuse me, 37-14 to 14 in week two. So they've lost four straight. Bank is caught in the backfield. Dominic Federoff, the freshman, shoots in. Nice looking freshman for linebacker. And this is what Southern Columbia just does so well every year, year in, year out. They can plug kids into their system. They just tell them this is your responsibility. Do the best, do give it a hundred percent. And when you have a freshman coming up and making those kinds of stops, that's that's outstanding, and that's a lot of credit to this coaching staff. Against Pittston area last year, uh, their highest rushing output of the season, 315 yards on the ground. Then in their final game against Dallas, Lachinsky threw for 123 yards. That's his a career high for him. Again, he only started the last two games did the junior quarterback. Luchinski's back trying to convert a third down. And he goes down quickly at the 15-yard line. Another sack 
for the Tigers, and the Bulldogs will have to punt. Jake Rose comes flying in from his outside linebacker position to put that pressure right in his face. And again, he does a nice job stepping out of it. But again, there's just too much pressure from the Tigers right there for him to get anything going. Trevor Yorks takes down Lachinsky. Well, we knew the task was going to be tough for the Bulldogs coming in. Then you add four starters out, including your top two running backs. And, you know, Berwick's playing tough. They were not going to let down as Wilk throws it out of, uh, kicks it out of bounds, excuse me. You know, Carm and Bo Orlando, the athletic director, both said, we're playing this game. Mm -hmm. I mean, there's no reason to stop. There you see Bo right, right there. there. You know, they're, they're going to play this game. They're going to go down, have fun, and see what happens. And that's, I, I talked to both coach Carm and coach Bo before the game and they felt no we're we are Berwick we have a tradition here we're going to step up there and play but and again I just can't imagine any of the coaches in the state or all over the country that have to make that type of changes hours before your, your a, kickoff a day before, I mean, less than 24 hours yeah uh, okay all right we're going to put Bob I want yeah. you now to go to quarterback Jan I want you to go to center uh, Steve Phillips we want you to go to wide receiver uh, you know I just that's tough on the kids and the staff because it limits your offensive and defensive calling. Yeah, it's tough on Steve. He's never played that position before. <laughs> now, if we had Gumble here. Well, that's a different yeah, story that, he, tied he, in. Know. Yeah. Weather has surrounded this area. If you look at the radar, which I have several times, there was a storm south of us. Mount Carmel started late. A couple teams postponed. Scoop Kilhaven. They got this one in, so something was in the works here. Uh, there is rain around us. Hasn't rained yet. Doesn't look like there's any storms coming, so that's good news. Keep this clock rolling and keep this game going for the kids on the field. So a quick hit inside the barns. Big hole. Taylor comes from behind, makes the stop. But a big game for West Barnes of 23 yards. They're inside the Allied Services red zone. You just see this right in here. They just full block the center and the guard. Again, they, all that means is they're switching their blocking responsibilities. That allowed Barnes that crease inside, and he gets a great gain. But this is what Southern Columbia is known for. They're just going to grind it out. And now with uh, Coach Roth's headset say, I want to start passing the ball more, now they're really, really going to be tough to stop. So there's a figure law first down. Not a lot of first downs tonight because, quite frankly, Berwick hasn't gotten many, and Southern Columbia has had a couple long runs. So you're right. <laughs> so there hasn't been a lot of first downs <laughs> in this game, just big scores, big plays. So on that first down, inside the Allied Services red zone, only a no gain for the Tigers. Good defense by Berwick. And Gage Garcia was shaking and baking in there. But, again, give credit to Gavin. Berwick. I'm sorry. Excuse me. <laughs> Garrett, Gavin, Gage. You were close. I was close. It was a Garcia. And I, I, I didn't mean to correct you. But no, it's that's okay. I appreciate that, Bob. You know that. And my apologies <laughs> to the Garcia family. I, I truly apologize. I mean, he's just out there. He's just doing what he does best, and he's trying to make it. But Berwick does a nice job containing him on that play. Flag down. Claybon to the end zone, in and out of the hands. I couldn't see. That might have been Rose. Yes, sir. But I think this one is coming back because it came off the sideline, so maybe an illegal motion or something like that. It is against Southern Columbia. This will back them up five yards. You know, in your first game, this is what happens. You have a couple of guys at new positions. Rose, he played some split in last sure. year. Sure. But he's starting now, and you got a couple other new, new replacements in there. And they're just not used to it. And, and, and when you are trying, I'm, I'm going to say new offense, they're passing, you know Rose is getting excited about that. So he just left a little bit early, and that anticipation. Uh, the quarterback may have changed his snap count in this first split second, but you know what? That also gives Cleveland a little bit more time now, a little bit more yardage to work with. Claybon straight back. Has plenty of time. Shoots it out to the outside. Rose wants a flag. He doesn't get it. Good defense out there by Boone. Braden Boone. 
and it will be a fourth down now. They're not kicking, don't have the kicker, so Southern will go for it. 534 left. Let's see if Coach calls a timeout. The Bulldogs' coverage that time was phenomenal. They were playing a man tight, and they had a free man over top with the free safety. Tate picking up on Garcia coming up the middle, and there is a timeout. So a 30-second timeout on the field. One thing we like to have back this year is getting Hannah into the crowd. She <laughs> loves being with the, the kids and, and seeing those great smiles, right? This big smile. So Look at that it, smile. I think it's smile cam time. I think it's that time. Hannah? Yeah, that's right, Bob and Jan. I don't know, though. This group is a little too shy for the Dr. Todd smile cam, but I'm going to give them a chance anyway. Let's take a look. Yeah! Had a bit. Hannah, maybe you should get them to, you know, do something well, next calm. time. I mean, they're a little, you know, <laughs> they're, they're too calm <laughs> for first game. I guess they're used to 24 nothing. so, yeah. yeah, okay. I didn't see a lot of smiles in there at all. Just heard a lot of yelling. <laughs> Dr. Todd smile cam all year long here on Friday Night Rivals. And uh, if you see the see Hannah coming up, get your smile out. Smile, be on baby. TV. So fourth down, Claybon back. Oh, sets up a screen pass to Garcia. And he waltzes in 18 yards. They made it look easy. Great call from Jen Roth. And Southern extends this lead now 30 to nothing. That was a great call for fourth and long. And you'll see it was set up beautifully. Rose does a great job on the outside. The offensive linemen peel off. They trim down. Look at 65. Just chips it. And again, he was able to get in there and do, a, do what he does best. Score for Southern Columbia. So the two-point conversion now going to be attempted for Southern Columbia. Five twenty-five left in this first half. Berwick hanging in there, playing tough, doing the best they can. And no school yet here in Tigerland. Oh, they're setting it up. Claybon's going to do the extra point. Good snap, good hole, and the boot is up and good. Just shades it through. Add that to Claybon's score, scoring points tonight, and it's 31 to nothing now, Southern Columbia, as we get towards the end of the first half. Jan? Law Ball Auto Repair does everything from oil changes, state inspections, tires, transmissions, and customizations. We'll even service your tractor. Serving the Berwick community and keeping your family safe for 21 years. Good luck, Berwick Bulldogs. Coach DeFrancesco pacing the sidelines. Let's see what he has in store for his Bulldog team. Talk to him this morning and you know, it was one of those, what else could happen to us? We're coming off a bad season. Then we're hit with this COVID protocol, lose four starters. They're starting backfield. Um, it, it, we had a nice laugh on the, I mean, he wasn't laughing because of that, but, you know, it's just football. It is. It's football, and it's got to go on. The show's got to go on. And Coach said the same thing to me. He said, Co he said Coach, you know, I could be upset. Uh, I have to laugh or else I'm going to cry about this situation. But we've been through this before, especially last year with all the protocols. There's a flag on that kickoff return, so we'll see what the official says. Could be a holding. Um, Berwick, so this will back the Bulldogs up, and you know we talked about their storied history, seven state appearances as a program, 825 wins, and here are the 60 championships all under Coach George Curry. They won the first year was out in 1988. I was there, <laughs> I was there. The station I worked at, I think, actually got to televise that game. So okay. you know that's back in back in the day, 88. That's when I started in this business, so a long time ago, and then of course. They, they won those three in a row, four in a row, and uh, 
1995, uh, when I was coaching outside in Philadelphia, we actually made a two and a half hour trip and had a try scrimmage with Berwick and Myers that year. And we ended up losing uh, three to one. And uh, our kids were excited to come up here and see what it was like to play Berwick. And Coach Curry sent me a really nice postcard, and I still have it to this day. Um, he was saying that there's always a good, there's always room for my, on my staff for a head like yours. And I think it was because I was the only guy that had a bald head. Oh, I don't know, okay. but. <laughs> you were a good coach. Thank you, Bob. I, again, th that year we won the Bucks County Championship. I had a great group of kids down there. Uh, we always had to contend every year with Central Bucks West, another oh, yeah. legend, CB West, yeah. uh, Mike Petten Sr., yep. um, you know, so, yeah, <laughs> there's great football in the state of Pennsylvania everywhere you go. Absolutely, those were some great years at, with the Bulldogs, Coach Orlando there, uh, Ron Paulus, uh, you know, you can go down the list of, of great players from there, and uh, just we'll have power hit inside the booth here. Turned off and on, so hopefully you still have us. Didn't see any lightning, so think maybe it's just someone flipped the switch. So after the penalty, second down now on the way for the Bulldogs. Okay, just had a lost a yard on the first play. Here comes the blitz. Balls up oh. in the air, batted around, and who recovers it? It looks like. Southern Columbia is on the bottom. Southern does have it. Turnover. And is that 33? Yes. It is number 33. And he's been around the ball all night. Connor Gallagher Senior with the fumble. Senior defensive back comes in. Again, just a bunch of miscues. Uh, this is what Berwick didn't want to do uh, from the get start. And, again, they're getting a little tired. You got so many of those kids on the in the white jerseys going both ways. Bad snap. Bad timing, it bounced all around. Again, and he just stole it right out from the offensive lineman's hands right there. So a first down and goal inside the Allied Services red zone for Southern Columbia. Trying to extend their lead now going into halftime. Pitch out to Barnes. Wilk is there, and Wilk makes a... Grab at him, but slows him down. Kishball comes down, I think, with him, and he comes up with the cramp. About a yard gain at best. Nice job. They go with that toss sweep. Again, they got lead blockers, and Dre Wilk does a nice job. And again, now the way that Berwick is pursuing to the ball, that really minimized the gain for them. Good try by the dog defense there. So Kishball, I think, had a little bit of cramping. He's still out there. He's still out there, yep. So the clock keeps rolling here in the first half. Garcia, off guard, cuts, and he's in. Another touchdown for Gavin Garcia. Southern extends the lead now, 37 nothing. They do a real nice job with that sweep action in there, but what sets it what makes it so special and different is instead of bouncing to the outside, Gavin Garcia's got great vision. Look at him. He pops it right back in to where the defense was. Uh, that's a very special talent. I mean, God-given talent that you can see that vision, cut back, and, and then turn that in for a touchdown. Second, second touchdown tonight. So Southern now will go for two again. Barnes bounces, and he can't get it. Good job by Berwick, holding him short of the two-point conversion. But with 3.33 remaining in the half, all Southern here tonight, 37 to nothing. Your score on a beautiful night for high school football. Friday Night Rivals is sponsored by Keystone College. Your career starts here with over 40 degree options, the lowest tuition, and a giant education. Register for on-campus open house on Saturday, September 25th. Garcia's third touchdown tonight. Two from the offense, one with that fantastic punt return. And that's where we stand right now, 37 to nothing.
as the sun sets, uh, getting a little bit cooler out on the field. <laughs> Not in the booth. Nope. The lights taking over here, the fluorescence, and this one is going to be kicked into the end zone. And Berwick will bring it back out to the 20-yard line. So Southern averages 377 yards, total yards all last year, 45-point average, uh, 62 yards through the air. And that's something they know Coach Roth wanted to work on. Uh, defensively, they're doing a nice job keeping Berwick off the board tonight, and that's what the concern was for Jim Roth coming in with eight it, new starters. It really was, and one of his keys to the game was his defensive line play, and right now they are playing very well against a, an inexperienced crew, but you know what? Coach Roth doesn't buy into that. He wants his kids to perform at 100% every time they step on the field. So they're being graded. They're being very critical of how their defensive line plays, and they're putting a ton of pressure on Berwick. So the dogs come out of the I formation. Bankus couldn't get anywhere. And that's what's tough about a 4-4 defense. They got eight guys in the box automatically, and the way that they are stunning, they're just like doing a couple slants here and there, but then they bring outside pressure. You saw number 19 stepping up in there. Uh, Ashton Helwig, you know, he's the cornerback on that side. So they got to contend with an outside linebacker, a cornerback, and the defensive end. And that makes a tall order to try to bounce it to the outside. Shinsky back, strong arms it, and off of Boone's hands. He was covered well out there. Goes incomplete third down now coming. And that ball was fired out like a cannon. You saw when it hit Boone's hands how high up in the air it bounced on that. I mean, it just ricocheted off him. Coming up inside the Toyota Halftime Report, Hannah O'Reilly talks to our, some of our friends from Allied Services about opportunities at their facilities around northeastern and central Pennsylvania. We'll hear from our friends at the Fox 56 News first at 10, see what's going on in the area. And then Jan and I will be back with scores and highlights and a nice check presentation to our friends here at Southern Columbia. Coming, That's coming up at the Toyota Halftime Report. Bank is shoots outside, taken down, fourth down on the way. Helwig again on the tackle. Nice job. Berwick ended up that time trading their tight end, so now they're going to overlap. They actually have an extra man out there, and that's why Bankus was able to get out there. You see the fullback attack. You see the outside receiver come in, but that extra tight end there sealed off that inside. Fedorov also in on a stop along with Garrett Garcia. So another punt. Wilk with a nice job keeping it away from Garcia. It will go out of bounds, though, inside Bulldog territory at the 40-yard line, and that's where Southern Columbia will bring the offense back out already up, 153 left, and two timeouts remaining in the half. Southern next week going to head up to Bloomsburg and take on Laurel Sock. We'll look at their schedule later on. And we'll talk, and talk in the second half about and Jim Roth thinks this might be his toughest schedule in years. He's going to face a couple teams that have state championships. One was in the state championship. So we'll talk about that in the second half as well. Berwick, meanwhile, will host Crestwood and then Hazleton. So week one of high school football is underway with Friday Night Rivals. Glad he could join us. Rare opportunity to run the ball from Masala, a senior. Matt Masala, number 22, with the carry. And the clock will keep rolling. You saw Spencer Kishball comes from his outside linebacker position. He comes right in there. Could have been dropped him for a loss, but again, he just couldn't make the tackle on this one. And you see, again, he just spun right back inside. 
that's what good running backs do. They look to see where the opening is. It might not necessarily always be where the play was called. So just down the line, they're experiencing a Mount Carmel as they take on North School Kill after they figure law first down. A lot of lightning strikes down there. They finally got the game underway. Spartans lead the Red Tornado 7 to nothing. But another lightning strike in the area. They may have to pause that game for uh, 30 minutes at yep. least. PIAA mandates if there's lightning, a 30-minute, uh, get the players, get them off the field, the officials, coaches, everyone off for 30 minutes. Under one minute for Jim Roth's team. Maybe trying to extend the lead, maybe trying to hold back a little bit, heading into halftime. We'll see. And off Barnes fighting his way. And he's still going. And he's finally wrestled down. And I mean wrestled down. One, two, three, four. <laughs> At the 16. Four Bulldogs. That's it. That's, Bob, I was going to disagree with you in terms of Coach Roth saying, no, we're, no. He's going to go full pedal to the metal. Uh, again, the game's played for 48 minutes. And you can see that determination in the way that their kids are running the ball. So figure law first down for Southern Columbia. Once again, inside the Allied Services red zone for the Tigers. Defending state double-A champs. Trying to make it four in a row. Five in a row. Five. Five in a row. Five. Twelve overall. <laughs> but it's only week one. Let's not count them yet. Barnes. Instead of going up the middle, he'll bounce to the outside, and he goes in for his first touchdown of the night, and the Tigers now lead this one. 43 nothing. We talk about the wing tee is predicated on misdirection and getting the angles and you're going to see a great job of how this is done. They fake at wing action coming across and he does a tremendous job just with a fullback dive up in there and he cuts it all the way to the outside for his first touchdown of the 21 season. Barnes at eight touchdowns last year on the ground and on the two-point conversion they will just take a knee and that will do it at the half so the Tigers come out a little slow but then they put the pedal to the metal we've seen a little bit of everything from Southern Columbia they leave Berwick 43 to nothing
I'm Bill Conaboy. I'm president and of Friday Night Rivals. Pennsylvania. I'm Bill Conaboy. I'm a sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. I'm Bill Conaboy of Friday Night Rivals. I'm Bill Conaboy of Friday Night Rivals. I'm Bill Conn Friday Night Rivals. Welcome to Halftime. I am joined with Melissa Palermo. She is the Assistant Director of Nursing at Allied Services. Melissa, thank you so much for joining me today. Thank you for having me. So now, can you walk me through what a day in the life of the Assistant Director of Nursing is like? Sure. So on a typical day, um, just going in, um, checking on all of our nursing units, checking in on all the staff, um, you know, make sure everyone is doing well and assisting them with anything they need, um, most importantly assisting all of our residents and our residents' families. Um, it has been you know, a crazy year as everyone knows, um, things are a little different and um, so they need a little extra TLC, you know, we have to kind of become uh, more of their family because the families can't come in and see the patients. Um, so we keep that connection between the patient and the family, kind of keeping that up. Now, you weren't always the assistant director of nursing. You kind of worked your way up. Can you kind of talk about your journey here at Allied? Yes, absolutely. Um, so I started here, oh, gosh, it's been about 20 years now. 20 years ago, I started out as a CNA. Um, I worked my way through school, worked went from a CNA to LPN and then LPN to RN. Um, I helped utilize the Allied has a tuition reimbursement program, which I utilized, um, which was very helpful um, in furthering my career. 
So um, that's a great um, incentive that we offer here at Allied Services. And now 20 years, that means it's a great place to work. And you guys actually have positions available. Can you kind of talk to our viewers about what's, what's open at this time? Yes, yes, we have all sorts of uh, positions open. Um, all of our nursing positions from CNA to LPN to RN, um, we're offering a lot of um, great bonuses at this time. Um, we have great incentive programs. Um, double overtime we're offering. We have actually great sign-on bonuses um, all the way up to a $15,000 sign-on bonus, which is great at this time. So. And now if somebody wanted to apply to a job at Allied Services, they could head to alliedservices.org and search careers and, and apply that way. Yes, absolutely. So we have a lot of great incentives. Come on over and uh, join our team. Well, Melissa, thank you so much for joining me. And we'll be right back. I'm Bill Conaboy. I'm president and CEO of Allied Services Integrated Healthcare System. And we're very pleased for the third year in a row to be a sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. Particularly during these struggles and these difficult times, our thousands of employees believe it's so important to this community to bring Friday Night Football to families throughout Northeast and Central Pennsylvania. So we look forward to another great season. And again, we're very pleased to be a sponsor of Friday Night Rivals. On behalf of Allied Services, we want to present the Southern Columbia School District a check for $250. Bill Callahan on hand, the Southern Columbia High School principal, welcoming us in. And I'll tell you, what a great spread they have up here, Jan. I know you didn't dive into any of the pecan pie behind me yet, or cookies, but I had a cookie and it was delightful. Delightful. So thank you for Southern Columbia for welcoming us in tonight to open this high school football season with the uh, much anticipated matchup between two of the state powers, Berwick back in the day, Southern Columbia now, but amazing. Two teams from Columbia County combined for 17 state titles. These, these teams, 
with that history that we talked about, Hannah talked about it, it it's just amazing to be in this atmosphere. Uh, Bob, you said the hospitality here by the Southern Columbia School District uh, has been top notch, just like they do everything around here. Their field, their facilities are wonderful. And uh, the, the fans, we thought, I, I asked some of the uh, fans that are here, I said, is this a normal crowd? And they were like, nope, 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 this is not a good crowd. And they, they attributed it because of uh, Bob I being on television and broadcasting this game. And I, I think it's gotten a little bit, it got crowded later. It did. A little it bit did. later. You know, people, the storms all around us may have kept some people away. Some some games were delayed because of lightning. A couple up in District 2 were actually postponed, pushed to tomorrow. Um, so, you know, that might tell you why some of the crowd. But, uh, you know, a game which we kind of expected, Berwick was definitely the underdog coming in against the perennial state champs. And then when you lose four players, including your entire backfield, <laughs> things get more difficult as you move on in this game. And it's shown uh, this, the powerhouse that Southern Columbia is has shown what they can do. Gavin Garcia going to uh, be the top player in the state again in, in Class AA. Uh, he had a magnificent punt return. Huh. Uh, he has <laughs> three touchdowns. Incredible. You know, Wislowski has scored. Claybon has scored. So, you know, the name players that we expect, you know, leading uh, the Tigers uh, once again. The way that this team operates, they can plug and play players into any of the positions, and they will be successful. Uh, it might not be as flashy as, as Gavin Garcia is, but uh, he is, he's been such a great role model in the classroom and on the football field for Jim Roth and the Southern Columbia Tigers. So the Tigers are back on the field. We're waiting uh, the Berwick Bulldogs. Can confirm the buses are still here. <laughs> They, you know, give them uh, all the credit in the world uh, to make the trip down here, knowing the news they got yesterday uh, with the COVID quarantine. They come out, they play tough. Um, they haven't shown the best offense. They played some tough defense, and they're hanging in there, and, and they're doing the best they can. They really are, and it, we knew it was a, a uphill battle, shall we say? But then it became a monumental uphill battle for these guys, and and. Berwick has been pretty respectable at times. They've just got to be able to consistently put something together on offense to uh, try to keep the Tigers off the field offensively. And then defensively, they're doing some nice things, but the Berwick Bulldogs are getting a little bit tired. So halftime yes. came at a good time, and the heat takes it out of them. Absolutely. So, you know, they really are playing really, really tough for uh, what they have to overcome. A lot of young fans here on hand. Uh, a young girl there. She's waving. She was cheering. So she wants waiting, to go out. Waiting for someone to come over. Uh, that gives us an opportunity now. Let's check a look at some of the highlights from the first half. That's actually the last play of the half. So Clavon opening it up. Uh, throwing down to Jake Rose for a big game. That was a great job with Rose. There's that, that buck sweep, and they just did a nice job. Berwick just shut it down. And, again, we're saying, okay, we got a game. But what's Claiborne doing? And Coach Roth, let's go to the air. It wasn't there. Some miscommunications. And he has a nice 30, I believe it was 31-yard 31 31 touchdown. Yep. Good job. Here we go. And, and he's off to the race. as a state champ. In the, um, yeah, he was part of the 4-by-1, yep. I believe, right? Braden was Lasky, 4-by-100. Also the 100 and 200 champ he <laughs> takes it down for a, a big play, 92 yards. And then maybe the play of the first half, off the punt, Gavin Garcia does Gavin Garcia stuff. Watch his vision down here. And not just, and again, the way he can stop on a dime, move, and shuck and jump. I mean, he just he's just a fun player to watch, and he's just so strong right there. He broke a tackle, uh, you know, at the 12-yard line to get in there. 62 yards, and then uh, off the fourth down play to Garcia on the screen pass. He takes it in from 18 yards, and then they cap the first half with another Garcia run. As you, and then Wes Barnes gets in the act. That actually caps the half, and that's where we stand now. 43 nothing. your score. Uh, Southern Columbia on their way to opening up 1-0 on the season. Keep that streak alive. 60 straight for Southern Columbia trying to make it 61 66 is the record 
and that was by Clareton from 2009 to 2013. Okay. 66 straight by Clareton. Of course, they had some great powerhouse teams uh, as well. Western part of the state. Absol no absolutely. Slouches. So uh, the last state loss for Southern Columbia was 2016. That's in states. That was against <laughs> Steel High. So 60 games on the line, 67 to break the record. And they'll have a tough schedule. Will the Tigers coming up, you know, the rest of the season? It's not going to be the easiest of schedule, as we talked about. They have Bloomsburg next week and then Loyal Sock. And then while they're going to be go up to Wyoming area again in Wyoming area, uh, reminiscent maybe of the two years ago when they won the state Triple A title. They are very a strong physical team, and they feel as though uh, this team, the Wyoming area team, is as good, if not better, than the state championship team. So Berwick won the toss to begin the game. They deferred to the second half, so they will get the ball. Uh, to begin the third quarter trailing 43 to nothing. Let's see if they can get some points on the board, get some confidence going before they take on a very tough Crestwood team in next Friday night. And again, now the clock is going to be running with the mercy rule being in effect for the second half. Uh, so Berwick's going to have to make sure if they want to try to make an attempt to come back, they're going to have to make sure they start getting the plays in quick and start executing even more importantly. So kicking off was Loudon Murphy, number 26. Trey Wilk pulls it down for Berwick. And the Bulldogs will come back out just past their 28-yard line and a little bit of a rough half for their quarterback, Matt Lisinski. As we take a look at the highlight, uh, the replay again of the kickoff. But Lisinski had a tough half. He threw, had a couple of overthrows. He had a nice strong arm. Uh, the short passing game was what worked for Berwick. In the first half. And there's a Southern Columbia Tiger down right now, number 16, and that is Michael Zido. And he also plays outside linebacker for them. So that could be a little bit of a concern. So here's the list of state championships for the Southern Columbia Tigers. We talked about 19 appearances, 527-plus uh, wins since 1963. And again, they're going for five in a row this year if they can get back to the finals. It's going to be tough. Wilmington's there. Stow Rocks is there. A couple of teams you know, going to try to stop this Tiger Express. And Zido is up on his own yep. accord and coming off the field, mandatory for one play. I'm sure he'll be back out. Yeah, not too many teams have had success trying to as you said, stop the Tiger Express. Uh, and Coach Roth, like I said, is trying to be more balanced now with that passing attack, and he's not afraid to keep working it now. And and that threat that they have with Rose at the outside, 6-2. I mean, and he can move. And like He won two gold medals, one in the 110 hurdles and the, and the 300 hurdles. So he's got a long stride on him, and uh, he's, he's just a great athlete out there to be able to throw to. Okay, let's talk about Berwick. What do you want to see from them as they hand it off? I just want to see them. Again. Go I just, uh, no, no, Bob, that's all right. I, I would like to see them just to try to keep establishing the run. Again, they're going to try to grind that clock out uh, with the help of that mercy rule. But, again, Coach Carm has done this so so long. He knows that he's not going to be trying for a big strike play. Let's just keep working. Let's get positive yardage. Let's ke let's keep everything simple because they've got all these new kids in there, and he wants more importantly to get out of here without any injuries. Single back set for Berwick. Try to get it out quickly to Boone. And a little bit off the mark by Lisinski. A nice big kid at 6'1", 205, a junior. Uh, what would you like to see out of the quarterback the rest right of the Right now, way? I just would like to see him uh, not throw as hard as he is, especially when you're throwing those quick outs like they're trying to do. That was like the typical what Oregon would run. They would have the two wide outs outside, stretch the defense out, and put them in a one-on-one -on -one position with the defensive back. But you got to be able to... The receiver has mm -hmm. to catch the ball, and he's just throwing too hard right now for that. 
Again, the Tiger defense with eight new starters on the year. Pitching a shutout. They would like to I'm sure keep that the rest of the way. Sinski back. Completes it near the first down. He had it in his hands. And it goes incomplete for Bo Sheptock, the 5'10 freshman. We know Sheptock is a, is a speedster. Uh, and again, he was just a yard short of getting that first down. And it was great coverage. Again, the way the defender came through, he stuck his arm in there in between the receiver's arm and his body and knocked that ball out. So Dre Wilk in to do the punting duties. As Brendan Hinkle is one of those players out on the COVID protocol. Garcia doesn't even try to go get it as Wilk wisely puts it towards the sidelines the Tigers will bring their offense back on to bring the, bring the uh, start the third quarter at the 42 yard line Harry's Sporting Goods since 1891 visit Harry's on West Front Street in Berwick for all of your back to school sporting good needs top brands top service good luck Berwick Bulldogs remember to shop local and as always hashtag you need new sneaks So the Tigers bring out a new quarterback in Tyler Arnold. And uh, Trevor York's number 28 yep. went in there as the running back. And the first snap of the second half for the Tigers goes on the ground. They recover it. A two-yard loss. So some substitutions now in for Southern Columbia to begin the third quarter. Giving a lot of the starters a break and a hot and humid evening. The long season for them, and why not take them out, get some experience for your backup. So we'll try to call them along the way. Arnold is the quarterback. Masala, the senior, taken down behind the backfield. So another loss. Well, again, there was a little miss, miss exchange on the handoff there between the quarterback and the, and the wing back coming across here. You'll see this in here. Again, it's a timing thing, and then when you have two new guys in there, it's it's going to take time. But these young men that are coming in right now for Southern Columbia, this is another reason why they're so good. You know, the, the varsity, their starters, they practice hard. They want to play four quarters, but this is early in the season. Let's keep those guys. It's 43 nothing. Let's get these young guys the experience they need. Well, Leffler to center, he's still going to snap the ball. And again, Arnold, too quick. Out of that snap, fumbles it. And Southern Columbia will be forced to punt. And what's going to happen is they're going to work on that center quarterback exchange on the sideline here. And again, what happens, you tell your quarterbacks, you always put your uh, your top hand, you want to put pressure on the back side of the center so he knows where to place the ball. And he pulled out a little bit too early as the ball was being snapped, and hence the fumble. Claybon did the punting in the first half. He comes back out, had to put his helmet on, really had to find it on the sidelines. <laughs> <laughs> so Berwick uh, will get the uh, punt from Southern Columbia. Now all kinds of confusions because you have some guys out. They had the second team in. Coach Roth calls timeout, trying to set up, you know, who's on the punt team. <laughs> uh, we... As coaches, you practice all the time your special teams, but now when you do a mass substitution of kids, there's always confusion, and that, that'll be addressed, and that'll be taken care of, I'm sure, by uh, it's 7.08 left in the quarter, probably by the seven-minute mark okay. <laughs> after this is done because they're not going to tolerate, you know, we don't want to have anything stupid and not look organized. So you tiger schedule, we talked about it briefly. Again, Loyal Sox are very good. Don't count out Bloomsburg. Loyal Sox, a triple-A team, very good. Wyoming area. A triple A team up there, very good. The rival with Mount Carmel, which they yes. couldn't play last year. Then you get Wild Missing, huh. who was in the triple A final a year ago. Yes, they lost a lot of players, but Jim Roth said uh, he likes what they've seen. And that's oh, their sure. first half schedule. And, you know, it doesn't get any easier than you have Sealands Grove and Danville to end, and no slouches in the middle. And we saw last year when we did the Lakeland 
Wyo Missing game. Wyo Missing looked like a uh, Division three college team yes. stepping off the bus. Now, a lot of those kids didn't move on to college, but still, I mean, the way Wyo Missing talks about lifting in the first period and getting yes. in the weight room, it, it's, a, it's, a, you know, it's a program down there, just like, you know, Southern Columbia is. That's going to be a tough test. It was interesting talking to the coach from Wyo Missing where he said they – all the athletes, not just football, all sports athletes will be lifting during first period. And it counts, I believe, he said, as their phys ed uh, credit. So those kids are all dedicated. All their sports teams are very solid, very strong, and that's one of the reasons why. And then Coach, he just had a great year last year with his wing team offense. So the clock is rolling. It stopped momentarily. Not sure why, but uh, supposed to keep running. Here comes Berwick again. Let's see if they can get something going positive. Lachinsky out and throws it into the ground. Had Wilk open. But the fundamentals missing a little bit from Lachinsky. Yeah, and he might have a little bit of the jitters in there because the way they're bringing a five-man, six-man pressure to him uh, just to disrupt the timing and, and trying to get into his face. That time, you know, Lachinsky threw it into the ground, and, and that's going to happen. These are high school kids. I mean, we're talking 17, 16, 17, 18-year-old kids. Uh, by no means are they professionals, and they're out there trying their hardest. Work pass out to uh, on the outside. Was that number six? Yeah. Slabinski? Yeah. Yep. Can't Rowan tell if it's a six or eight. Yep. Yeah, it's tough to tell. And that was what we talked about last series with them. That time, Lachinsky threw a nice ball. It was a catchable. It was right down there. And this is what they did that first series where they kick out the outside cornerback with the inside receiver. And that allows the outside receiver now to get that extra yard. He does a nice job getting to the outside, spin away from where the defenders are. Across the middle and overthrows Wilk. Goes incomplete for Lachinsky. And that should bring up fourth down. Let's see if Coach Carm DeFrancesco might go for it or he'll kick against the I think Coach Carm also, with the adversity of the COVID protocol, uh, I think it, losing your running backs, I think he was going to go more with a running game and then trying to through do all the short passes. Uh, there's a lot of timing in, and they're going to have all this week to work on it for Crestwood. Wilk again keeps it away. Say so it's not Garcia, but it is uh, Loudon Murphy comes up and makes the catch on the run. And nice return for him. He'll place it inside Bulldog territory. Right at oh, the right right at midfield. So there we go. Law Ball Auto Repair does everything from oil changes, state inspection, tires, transmissions, and customizations. We'll even service your tractor. Serving the Berwick community and keeping your family safe for 21 years. Good luck, Berwick Bulldogs. Okay, another new quarterback now. Blake Weiss, a sophomore. Let's see if he gets a snap. He can. Goes up the middle to Masala again. A uh, senior had 30 carries a year ago for 175 yards and two touchdowns for the senior. And again, Masala, like you were just saying, Bob, his stats from last year, he got spotted playing time. He's going to start getting that playing time now mm -hmm. more and more. And what a great way to go out your senior year, getting more carries, getting more touches, and hopefully getting a couple touchdowns. Aiden Barkavich is junior now doing the snapping. Inside handoff to Trevor Yorks. Looks like number 20. He started on defense, and Berwick is right there. Well, they end up running just like out of the wing tee. They run their what they call their ISO, and they just bring their halfback through, and the fullback follows him through. So the halfback's got the lead job in terms of blocking. So it looks like you have a deal at the right 
tackle 52 is Robert Long at the right guard. Back to throw, a nice little pitch and catch. Wise to Kyle Chrisman, a sophomore. Positive gain, but it's it's still be fourth down and call it about two. Here we go, right there. You see that confidence? You have put a new your third string quarterback, a sophomore. A nice, easy confidence throw right there, and again sets them up fourth and two. And you know, Coach Roth is going to be going for this one. So two minutes left here in the third quarter. Running clock with a 43-0 lead. The Tigers not in any hurry, but still want to watch the play clock. They're going to pooch kick it on fourth down. Takes a positive roll, <laughs> and it goes inside Bulldog territory at the 20-yard line. And that's where Berwick will take over. 90 seconds and running here at Jim Roth Field in Catawissa. Right now, Coach is trying to get their offense. He's, he's probably saying, look, let's just settle down, play your assignment football, and let's just get positive yardage, and we'll worry about the next first down after we get this first one. You go in with a game plan. You find out Thursday, yesterday. It's not. It, it's tough to put a second game plan in, even to say, "Oh, let's do this" or "Let's try and do this." Because you know you've been putting it in and practicing with the kids for two weeks. Really, you know you have a scrimmage, mm -hmm. but really you've been putting this game plan in for a weeks. And, and, and to it, say, "Oh, let's change it" or do some trick plays or do this or that it, it, it's, it's almost impossible it really is and, and you can see coach Carm right now he, he's not upset with his kids he's upset with, in, with the situation that as we said earlier Bob we were joking saying like you know put Bob Ide in at running back Steve Phillips at the wide receiver um, but when you're counting on your starters and they can't be there it does change the game plan and it limits the amount of plays you can run Lunchinski's just got to take a little bit of heat off of those balls so that the receivers have a chance to catch it. Okay, third quarter in the book. All Southern Columbia here. Fourth quarter coming up here on my TV. WQMY. Back in Catawissa, Bob I, John C. Jack, Nina O'Reilly, all Southern Columbia over Berwick in this much anticipated matchup between uh, two state teams. Berwick, though a couple decades away from that, in a positive play. Machinsky finds Taylor over the middle. It's a figure, a Keystone College first down for a gain of 15. That was a nice job by Lachinsky. He had time by that offensive line. And he throws a nice strike in there to not to uh, Johnson. Taji Taylor. I'm sorry. Yep, yeah, it I, was, I was Taylor. I was looking at yeah. the wrong chart he, on this one. I'm looking at. 
He had one catch last year, 56 yards, and went for a touchdown. So a positive play. Let's see if Berwick can get into the end zone. Some of the backups now in for Southern Club on defense, and just tripped up is Bankus, who was taking the had a lot on his plate tonight, getting most of the carries. Had some, had some, it does have some positive yards. Absolutely, and this is what you need. You know what? They're getting their reps in right now against a very good second team, Southern Columbia defense. Uh, right now, Austin Reeder for them is out there. He had broken his thumb, and he got clearance uh, to play. So now he's out there. He's number 57. You can see his arm is heavily uh, padded up to protect that thumb. But he's getting his reps now, too. Left side for Bankus. Uh, close to a first down, about a yard and a half short. Brings up third down now. For Berwick, who will host Crestwood next week, and then Hazelton. Crestwood currently down to Williamsport, 12 to 7 in the third quarter. That game started a little bit later due to lightning up in the Wilkesbury Scranton area. In fact, Lake Lehman and Lakeland was postponed till to, to tomorrow at three okay. o'clock. Now Valley View Dallas was postponed, but the players came out and they ended up playing. <laughs> and last score we had, Dallas was beating Valley View. We'll update that in a minute. So on third down, second effort. It's going to be really, really close. Yeah. James DeAndra going to be close to a Keystone College first down for the dogs. He's going to be short, and I think Coach Carm, why not near the your own 45, you'll go for it? Be in fourth, fourth quarter, you have to. Again, the kids are starting to now feel a little bit of confidence. They're starting to gain it. And this, will, this is a statement for Berwick right now. In terms of if we get this first down, fourth and short, that's going to make the offensive linemen feel pretty good about themselves and continue on the rest of this game. DeAndre bounces out to the outside, has a Keystone College first down up to midfield. Gain of six. Stopped over there by number one, Chrisman, for Southern Columbia. And these guys, again, Southern Columbia's defense is no slouch. They're trying to get their reps. They're trying to show their coaches we can play. You can see they're flowing fast to the football. And again, but he got there. They got there just a little bit too late in terms of stopping that first down. Late flag comes in. DeAndra belted from behind. Good tackle on the way back by Kyle, uh, Colden Bloom, a sophomore. Boy, I'll tell you what, as a running back. And that penalty was against Berwick for the illegal motion. And as I was saying, to continue my thought, he was running forward and he got walloped from behind by Bloom. That hurts because you're not expecting that. You're not seeing it. And all of a sudden, right there, he does a great job. Shoulder in there and just wraps him into the ground. New quarterback now for the dogs. Ethan Lear is in there, number three. And up for a nice positive game is uh, looks like DeAndre again. 33. Does a nice job making up that uh, penalty, that five yards, and a little bit more. I have Valley View 12, Dallas 7. Nice job by number 14. That's Tyler Arnold, the junior. Uh, defensive end comes up and drops him for a four-yard loss. So third and long now facing... This Bulldog offense, a lot of substitutes in. Again, they don't have a lot on the field no matter, going into the game because they have a short roster. So some playing time 
for some of the guys who didn't start. Deandra. Down the sidelines. Up and just past. Let's see where they're going to mark him. Nope, he's going to be short of a Keystone College first down. Fourth down, you'll go for it if you're Berwick. But Absolutely. a nice job. What I was impressed with uh, the defensive line that time was Aiden Barcavage, the junior defensive lineman. How he blew that play up. I mean, he just blew right through the offensive lineman, and he was in the backfield. But it was he came from the left side, running back. Excuse me, he came from the right side, running back, went to the left side. So Southern Columbia will win their 61st straight. Go start 1-0, and went 12-0 and last week. Last year, excuse me. It seems like last week. It we does were, seem we, like, we were it just does. here. It, it feels like. Well, we were actually in Sealands Grove. Oh, but we were here last week for <laughs> well, the scrimmage for the with scrimmage, Valley View. <laughs> yeah. Close. Let's see. They're going to give them the Keystone College first down. They will move the change for Berwick. So Berwick keeps going. Clock keeps rolling near the five and a half minute mark. The one thing with, when you play Southern Columbia, it's a great measuring stick how your kids respond and how they can play. Last week, talking to Coach Juanis from Valley View, they, they had a nice two-hour travel time down here uh, to play the best team in the state, and that was a great gauge for him to evaluate his kids as players to see how they respond in that type of situation. And Valley View came out of here pretty good. Uh, they lost 3-1, to one, but they did some things that they wanted to see. Here's a nice play right here. Bankus, back in. Good job, ball security. As soon as he started to get hit, you saw he brought his offhand over top of the ball, left hand covering both points, making sure it doesn't squirt out of there. Liam Carroll, the sophomore, pulling on that, number 78. Gets a nice block. Berwick trying to get out of here with some points. Southern trying to hold the shutout. Both teams will move on to next week. Make some adjustments, I'm sure, along the way. Lear lost the handoff, powers his way to the outside, ridden out of bounds by Chrisman. Be about a yard short, so another fourth down coming up. They were trying to do the inside power play with that, and you could see the running back went inside, the guard fold block with the center in there, and they just didn't get the mesh in there. Again, this is their third team quarterback that they have in there now getting reps. Those scoring in the second half from either team as the clock has moved pretty rapidly. Bankus gets a Keystone College first down up to the 25. Getting in five for him. Well, yeah, 26. One, yeah. one bright spot for Car Coach uh, De Francesco tonight is going to be Bankus. How durable he is, how he is stepping up. He likes to spin when he starts to get that first contact. So that, that's got to be a positive coming into week two for him. All smiles on this side of the field, <laughs> Hannah. So let's go down and see what you have. Yeah, that's right, Bob and Jan. We have more smiling faces on the Southern Columbia side for the Dr. Todd Smile Cam. Let's take a look at these cheerleaders. <laughs> Thank you, ladies. Appreciate it. Lear taken down, ridden in the backfield. By number six, Jake Hoy does a nice job coming up there as the sophomore defender comes up and drops him for loss. But we saw that right there, Ethan Lear does a nice job with the stiff arm in there. Mm -hmm. Again, that was an RPO, and the quarterback kept. He pushes him down right there. Hoy comes flying in and drops him for a loss. Carter Madden was ridden down by that stiff arm, the sophomore for Southern Columbia. So we're nearing the two-minute mark of the completion of this game. We'll be back on the air next week up in District 2. Dunmore taking out Old Forge. Bouncing to the outside, Winter. Winter. 
I think that was Tyler Arnold with the drop. So, again, we talked earlier, Bob, in the first half about the speed that the Southern Clumber Tigers have. That was a nice job with the pursuit, and he drops some gain on that play. And this is actually a pretty exciting time for all these guys. The, the second teamers coming in, it's their chance to shine, their chance to step on the gridiron and show their coaches that they do know their assignments and their alignments, and they're going to be playing 100%. Well, we lucked out, Coach. No yes, rain. Did. No rain. I'm telling you, it was all around us on the radar. As Lear gets ridden down again. I think but not here. <laughs> I think Coach Roth sent an Something. email to someone saying, yep. yep, let it hit around us, not here. <laughs> and it's that's really important for both these schools to be able to get that in because when you get hit with a lightning strike, again, now it's a 30-minute delay, and it's hard to keep your focus on these kids, uh, especially I couldn't imagine if they postpone a game, then you have to come back the following day to play. Or if you're at the facility already and you have to come back. Right. You know, Lakeland and Lake Lehman comes to mind. But, but it, safety, safety the, the first, kids' yeah. safety is first. I, I mean, kids, players, and spectators. So last play of the game on fourth down. And that will do it. So Southern Columbia's winning streak is up to 61 now. As they beat their rivals from Northern Columbia County. <laughs> Berwick Bulldogs, the final score, 43 to nothing. That was the score at halftime. No scores in the second half with the running clock. But great performance by Gavin Garcia with three touchdowns. Woloski a touchdown. Baybon with a touchdown, and that's pretty much the way the game has gone. All the stars that we came and see, they all did what they needed to do. 92, they shown big run tonight. by Wozlowski, yep. and an even greater run by Gavin Garcia <laughs> to start the season on a punt return. So Hannah O'Reilly will present our Friday Night Rivals plaque to our players of the game, Braden Wozlowski and Gavin Garcia. So we'll wait for that, but Coach, your thoughts? I'll tell you, Gavin Garcia, uh, if you get a chance, uh, everybody listening, if you can actually come and see this young man play actually live, it's more exciting because he really is the real deal. He's going to be going to a great school, with, you know, the hard decision that he's got to make. But Southern Columbia saw what they needed to see tonight. They saw their defensive line start to put pressure on. They didn't have any real turnovers. They had that one at the second play of the game, uh, and that was remedied. And then Coach Roth, very smartly, it's a very hot night, took those starters out, let the younger kids come in second half to start getting their experiences now. Coach Carm, Francesco for Berwick. Uh, like I said, the obstacle he had to overcome just 24 hours before the, your first game, uh, I thought his kids did a really nice job mm -hmm. tonight coming out. They, they showed uh, glimpses of really, really strong play, both offensively and defensively. And uh, he came away with uh, Bankus looking like a legitimate running yeah. back after only having 27 yards last year. He had that, I think, after the first quarter. He did a great job. Uh, Lachinsky's just got to calm down, I think, his throwing. I'm not by any means an expert, but some of those balls were coming out there so hard and so yeah. fast that they were uncatchable. Certainly so. a strong-arm kid, big kid, uh, settled down a little bit. Yes. He's going to be a, a good quarterback. Ben Knorr is in there. He'll come back. Mm -hmm. Aiden Mason will get back. So, you know, hopefully they can get it back next week. They have two tough games, two very good oh, teams on the way. Time. Crestwood and Hazleton back-to-back, -back, so it's not going to be easy for the Berwick Bulldogs, but give them a lot of credit for showing up tonight. And they did, I, and and they gave Berwick, uh, or excuse me, they gave Southern Columbia Southern. a little bit of like, whoa, what's going on here in that first quarter? You know, with the turnover, then they were moving the ball, and, and again, Southern Columbia doesn't ever press the panic button. They just play football Southern Columbia style. Okay, let's go, go down to the presentation of the plaque with Hano O'Reilly. All right, Bob, I have Gavin Garcia and Braden Wazowski, both great players tonight. They are the players of the game. Br Gavin, I'm going to start start with you. 43 nothing. What worked for your team tonight? Um, 
think we just had it clicking through the air and in the run game when Liam connected with Jake right away. I think that made him stay honest with the run game, and then we start busting some runs with the run. Liam dumped off a dump pass, and we got some success through the air. So once in our run game and our passing game are balanced, we're pretty unstoppable, and I think that's what worked well. And props to our defense for putting up another shutout. And we look forward when you, when they're doing their job, they just get us back on the field. So. And now, what was going through your head during those three touchdowns? Um, just get to the end zone. Our, you get minimal carries when we only get to play till halftime. A little upset about that, but we got to make maximize our opportunities, kind of like this kid did with his three carries going for 100 yards. So hope he gets back. We need him. So hopefully next week he's back on the field to play. Yeah. Cyrus. Yeah. Well, Gavin, congratulations. Now, Braden, what was your thought process going into tonight's game? Uh, I was just so ready to come out here with all these fans and get back on the field with my boys after a state trip and going for another one this year. And then what are you hoping you bring from this game to the game next week? Um, I just hope I get to come back on the field because of my knee. That's really about it. Yeah, well, congratulations to you as well, Gavin and Braden, players of the game tonight. Bob, back to you. Two stars. You heard Braden banged up a little bit with the knee. He'll be, he should be back. Uh, they have Bloomsburg next week. So, you know, maybe able to rest it and still, again, move on. Uh, looking for win number 62 in a row. Jan? Though, I'll tell you, those are two great players. School district, Southern Columbia football, their families, they do such a great job. Very modest kids. They, they could very easily come out here so cocky, but they don't. Coach Roth does a nice job throttling that down, making sure that they're focused on the task at hand. And uh, what a great game. Uh, congratulations to Southern Columbia Tigers. And I know Coach Francesco really wouldn't want to hear this, but you know what? My hat's off to him because for him and his staff and his players to come back, come down here to play, they know a nationally ranked team. And they really did a nice job, I thought, uh, trying to compete with this team tonight. Well, good wrap-up from Jan there. Next week, Jan and I get to the pizza capital of the world, a favorite of our crew we know, <laughs> who did an another nice job tonight. And it's a Lackawanna League crossover between Division Three and Four. Dunmore taking on Old Fours will be on the air next week at 7 o'clock. And we'll be at the pizza parlor at 4:30. So look for us, <laughs> look for us there if you're looking to uh, come up to Old Ford. So a big win from Southern Columbia. They win it 43 to nothing. So for the entire Fox 56 Sports crew, for Han O'Reilly, Jan Cichak, this is Bob Ide saying, Week One in the books. We'll be back for Week Two next week. Watching Allied Services Friday Night Rivals, presented by Dixon City Hyundai and Performance Kia.